Well, how do I remove the clicking sound when copying and pasting when making electronic music or beats? And we'll just see if we can create some clicks and pops to, <laughs> to make this work for us. So we'll just grab our Apple Loops and uh, what will we go with? We've got some funkiness. Let's go with some 80s funk bass and we'll just throw that in there. So we've got this going on. And let's just say that we had another track that we're going to try and swap it in between here. The problem with these loops is that they're actually designed. Uh, so we'll grab the big funk slap bass. Oop, grab, hold, pop. That they're actually designed to, to really nicely transition between. But let's just say that they didn't. So let's um let's create let's create the problem here. We'll zoom all the way in here. And this works the same on any software. So zoom into there. And let's just say we were getting something like this. But we might have to go bump and loop it. Loop. No, oh, there we go. So let's just say that we had that where we've got this going into this. Is that the sort of click and pop you're talking about? Where you're going in between two bits like that? Like this. That could click. So that is caused by the fact that you are doing a cut right in between two different bits of audio. So the answer is to always cut in between. So it really doesn't matter where you actually do your cut. But the problem is that sometimes, even if you cut right on the bar marker, that's not going to be the right thing to do. If you're cutting in between things, there's two things you can do. Make sure that your cut is in a section where nothing's there. So if we unloop this, uh, settings, turn looping off. Oh, it is off. Uh, we should be able to trim this back. So if we did this, say, here, then that's going to be a place where we can do it in between, like that. And then uh, if we brought this back there, it'll mean that when it's going in between these two, hit play. <laughs> See, now we've created something really weird, but you know what I mean. We can actually do it in between. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds a bit jarring, doesn't it? So obviously you wouldn't have it like that. The other problem, the other thing that you can do is try and do some sort of crossfade. Now here in GarageBand, crossfading is hard. Uh, in something like Reaper or Pro Tools or Logic, you can you can do crossfading a lot easier by just coming here in between and just adding a crossfade. But with GarageBand, what you basically need to do is add a second track. So duplicate it out here and then move between the two. So let's just say that we did have sort of a real jarring spot here where these two things were coming together. What I would actually do is grab your automation. So tap on there, tap again, go to automation and then actually automate the volume of this one down, flick it on up the top here and make this one come down really quickly while at the same time making this one come up really quickly. And this can help smooth out some of those problem areas. If you've got, whoop, undo that one, undo. If you've got audio that's clipping or that you're getting those pops and clicks, doing a little mini crossfade between them. Now, I've exaggerated this out so that you can kind of hear what I mean. But if we play this back, take a listen to how, uh, how this works here. It sounds really bad, doesn't it? Uh, but yeah, you get the point there. So number one, make sure that your cuts are always in between. Don't ever cut right in the middle of a piece of audio. Number two, using a simple little crossfade can actually uh, help you out there. 